Hey, welcome to the video. The other day a good friend of mine brought his Telecaster body into the shop because he wanted me to add an armrest and a belly cut contour to it. I thought this would be a good opportunity to make a video because I do this a little bit differently, I think, than other people. So I'm going to show how I do it. I add a few more steps, but I think you can tell that this really did turn out nice. It almost looks like it was done by a CNC. I've gone ahead and already marked off where I want the contours, but I'm going to go over everything and show how I figured out where to place all these lines because uh, there's no set rule to where everything has to be. It's not as accurate as say like a bridge bushing or something like that, that has to be 100% dead on. But you really do have to pay attention to what you're doing or else it's just not gonna look right. The first line you wanna figure out is the bottom of the belly cut right here. And I don't do a lot of tele bodies. So I just Googled Telecaster bodies with a belly cut and I came up with uh, several pictures that all pretty much looked identical. So I just copied that shape and that seems to work out really nice. Follows the shape of the body and everything. You gotta pay attention to these things. Look at the shape of the body, make sure it works with it. It doesn't look awkward. It's not too pointy. It has a nice flow just like the, the rest of the body. This is a jig that uh, I put together a few years ago. It was temporary at first. It's just made up of odds and ends and whatever I had, <laughs> just screwed it together. But this works really well and this is how I shape the belly cut in the drill press, but I'll talk more about the jig later. Uh, right now I'll show you how to figure out this line because this relates directly to the bottom line. You can't just make up this line. If you can imagine an invisible line starting from this edge down here and going straight up at a 90 degree angle, it's got to come out somewhere on the top of the body. So we want to make sure that it's where we want it's, it. This looks pretty good. I've already done it, but I'll show you how I figured it out. So I just have a, a set square that I just put right down here on the base of the jig. So it's 90 degrees to the bottom of the, the jig so it can line up to the body. I like to use my calipers. You can use anything, a stick, mark it with a pencil. You don't have to have the exact measurement, but I'll show you what I'm doing here. I get that measurement, the distance between the set square and that line with the belly cut. And then I just bring it up here and I line this edge up. And I just drop it down until it touches the body. And then what I've done is I put a little tiny piece of tape in here. And I did that all the way across about uh, four times. And then I used uh, a long piece of tape, just connect the dots to uh, figure out roughly where that profile is gonna end up. Now that we have the belly cut figured out and I'm happy with that, I can move on and figure out where the armrest is gonna go. The only thing that my friend was really concerned about was He's going to put a Bigsby on it. Now I have one. It's not a Tele Bigsby or for a Tele, but it's the same width and it's going to give us an idea what's going on. We go somewhere around there. You can see it's obviously not right for this body, but it gives us an idea uh, what the relationship is between where the, uh, the armrest will go and the Bigsby. He didn't want it to go under the Bigsby. Some armrests actually go down past the middle point of the body. So we're going to bring it up a little bit and you can see it's about... I don't know, five eighths, uh, three quarters above. So that's gonna look pretty good. That's gonna be all right. The next thing I wanted to figure out was the angle of the belly cut itself. And there is no set rule, like I was saying. You can do almost anything you want. Here's the apex of that curve. And I've kind of got an equal amount on both sides, kind of like the, a lemon wedge shape. If you want a more aggressive look, you could tilt this forward a little bit, angle it forward. It's up to you. But you have to keep in mind that it does relate to how the belly cut comes up in here. And I'll talk more about this in a minute. The last line to figure out is the bottom line here of the armrest. And a few years ago, I made up this little template or jig or whatever you want to call it. This is actually the profile. So this represents the very edge of the body. So basically just line that right up like that. You can see where to line the tape up and then just kind of guess a little bit, estimate where it would go and match it up to the edges here. And that's pretty much where your armrest is gonna go. The other thing that my friend was a little bit concerned about, now this is a poly finish and he's not stripping it. And there is also a veneer on this body. So he was a little worried if we bring that up and taper it off to nothing, what that line's gonna look. You're gonna have a very wide area where it's gonna be a kind of a messy area where there's a lot of lines where you go through the poly and then go through the veneer. So I said, well, 
will have a definite line. We'll bring it up and then go straight so it'll be more of a, uh, a an edge to it so that it'll look a lot cleaner. So once you're happy with your armrest and your belly cut you want to make sure the relationship between the two you're happy with and that's this space here that's what's going to be left over that's the edge here and you know it comes in it tapers in right about you know the the apex of this this contour and then it starts to widen off a little bit and then you get the the armrest coming in here as long as it looks consistent it looks neat and even nothing sticks out in a weird angle what i did is i took pictures of this sent it off to my buddy said how do you like it he replied with a thumbs up so we're ready to uh, start hacking this up. Just have a couple of clamps uh, holding the, the body to my bench. That's all we really need. And I'm gonna start off with the rasp. And this is pretty aggressive. We're gonna remove a lot of wood here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in on this angle. I'm coming into the profile. If I were to come out, chances are I'm gonna remove chunks of wood into the part that I wanna keep. So going in in this direction is gonna ensure that I keep that nice and clean. Plus, this is a poly finish, and the chances are, if I came in this way, I'm going to take off big chunks of poly, so don't want to do that either. Want to keep this nice. Don't want to be fixing stuff down the road. I'm going to keep it uh, on an upward angle. Just going to stop right now because uh, I just wanted to point out, you can see here, all the, uh, the poly that's just chipping right off, like a big chunk. Now, this doesn't matter because, you know, we're removing all this but you can see all the little pieces so if I were to come down the other way you can see look how thick that poly finish is I don't want to have big chips into where I, I want to keep the uh, the profile nice and I'm pretty sure my my buddy is not going to remove this he's not stripping this body so uh, we got to keep this nice and clean but yeah just check that out look how thick that is <laughs> it's uh, wow that's a lot of finish on there i don't know if it really shows in in the camera but i'm getting a lot of chipping from this poly but i still i don't want to come right up close to that tape edge i want to leave a little space i want to bring that down with the uh, the barrel sander and also, you know, hand sanding as well. I don't want to go right up to there. But I'm getting a little nervous with this chipping. Uh, I knew it was going to happen, but it's chipping a lot. But there's a little peak right here because the angle of my, my rasp was, you know, not straight across, but a little bit on an upward angle on both sides. So that, that's fine. But I can go through and clean that up without hitting either side. And then we're ready for barrel sanding. Another reason I didn't want to go right to the edge, there's a lot of sanding. You can see there's a lot of deep grooves left from the file. So, you know, those all have to come out. So we're going to have to take off a lot of material. I think you kind of get the idea of how that jig works. It's set up in the drill press. It's stuck at that angle, so it's going to come up really straight. And I don't know what angle it's on. I'll have to get my protractor out. But you can see what I'm going to do is drag this back and forth on the table. I'm watching my line. This will stay nice and straight. Now the only thing is I do have longer barrel sanders, but they're kind of chewed up right now and uh, all I have is this one. So I'm just going to have to move the table up and down a bit more. I think it's more clear now how you can see it working and uh, it's working very, very well. It's still pretty rough. There's a lot of hand sanding it, but this really does uh, bring it into the right shape. And you can see I have to bring it up a little bit by a little bit. So I raise it up and I'm just going to do like this section now. And I start at the top. That's the best place to start. It might seem like a lot of work, but you know, something like this, you don't want to rush. Take your time. The more time you spend on it, the more patience you have, the way better it's going to turn out. That's looking really good. Just finished barrel sanding. It's still really rough. That's uh, probably about a 60 grit that I have on there. So you're not going to get a baby smooth just yet. But because of that contour, uh, the only way to do it from here on in is uh, hand sanding. And uh, probably the same, 60 grit, just to get it all nice and smooth. And then work our way up with the green. But you can see how you don't have to be 100% exact. I could have brought this down maybe a bit more. But I just, you know, a little nervous about taking it down too far and then ending up way down here. And you can see up here it comes in a little bit to the tape, but overall that's pretty much the shape that I was looking for. And I think that looks good. 
But anyways, we're on the right track. So even though I have hand sanding to do, I'm going to stop on the belly cut and move on to the armrest now because uh, I don't want to go finishing that. I want to get this done and then finish both at the same time with the final hand sanding. Kind of get them both at the same stage. I'm all ready to do the armrest and I hope I can explain this in a reasonable way because it's a system that I made up and I know what I'm doing but it's one of those things where like how do you explain this? I made several little jigs here, uh, templates or whatever you want to call them, to help me out. Uh, this is what I've been using for years. I made this a long time ago. All these lines here, which represent all these lines, uh, transferred onto here. This is what I use to set up, you know, on my uh, my router. Right now, I've got that set for the first one, which would be the deepest which will uh, come down in, you know, around here, a little bit less than what I actually want it to be. Because I'm not using the bearing, what I'm using uh, is the edge of the router. So I just uh, measure that with my caliper. And what I do is I, I have markings here. The first one, I've got these little incremental lines. So let's see here, we'll just line that up. That's my first route. And then the second one, I'll move it back, move it back, move it back. And then each time, I'm going to take my little, uh, you know, and I'm going to move the router bit down to the next line, to the next line, to the next line. And I'm going to come along until somewhere around here is where I'm going to stop because I don't want it to taper off to nothing. I want there to be like a little, a little edge to this because we were talking about before with the veneer and the poly and everything else. My buddy was concerned that if I go to, you know, taper it off to nothing, you're going to get this awkward, big, fat transition from one to the other. So we're going to just, you know, kind of like a hard edge, but still, still nice. So I don't know if that makes any sense. I'm going to go through it and it'll make total sense once you see it. Now that I'm done all my routering, I've got this sort of step thing going on here, but this really does uh, work out well. As I wear these steps down, I can see the little line, and that helps to keep me uh, on track and everything straight, so I don't take off more uh, off one side than the other. That's about as far as I want to go with the file. Um, I Normally I would go a little bit further, but with the poly, I'm afraid I'm going to get a lot of chipping. So I'm going to start uh, with the sander, and I have my old reliable here. <laughs> this is probably... Uh, as old as I am or maybe even older. But I like the big huge surface here and that's going to help to keep this nice and flat. Palm sanders are great but like I say this will help keep it flat. I also have my ruler, a little straight edge to make sure that that line maintains a, a nice straight line there. That's uh, pretty much as far as I'm going to go with the sander. Uh, it's given me a little bit of a problem here with this piece. You can see there's a, a line and there's another line over here in this one area there's three pieces of wood and you can see the the veneer and the uh, poly and that's what I was saying with if I were to taper that off anymore you're gonna get a wider and wider gap a wider line so it's gonna look more and more awkward so we're gonna leave it at that but this piece of wood here is uh, it, it's sanding less than it is over here so I'm just gonna have to work on it by hand to smooth it out because if I keep sanding it this one's gonna um, drop down sand faster than this one and I'll never get it straight across so it's just gonna have to be a little bit of hand sanding that's no big deal and then uh, do the belly cut and we're done I'm gonna hit it with a uh, hundred grit by hand and just to smooth that out a little bit more get the sanding marks off from the, the 60 grit and I think we're pretty much good to go with that I think I'm pretty happy. Okay, I'm ready to attack the uh, the belly cut, and unfortunately, I can't come in here with a uh, sander. It's just you know, obviously, it's not the right shape. There's no machine that'll really get that nice and smooth. This is going to be a hand sanding job. Boy, being that this is made out of basswood, really speeded things along. I didn't need any of my other little contraptions that I dug out. Uh, all I used was this my. My other little invention. This is kind of handy. I love double-sided tape. And that's all I did. Is I stuck that 60 grit piece of sandpaper to uh, 
a Cineplex card. Yeah, this is the part that goes on the back, but you could use the actual card if you want once they're done. Keeps nice and flat and smooths it out. And it's flexible. So these things work really great, but uh, yeah, double-sided tape. My best friend. All right, we're at the end of this project and the end of the video. This turned out really well. I had a lot of fun doing this. Basswood is so easy to work with. And I'll tell you, that's why guitar companies love to work with it. It's easy on their machines, their bits, and all that kind of stuff. This is a five to six piece body. It's laminated basswood. I looked in here, you can see the seams, and you can see them along here. There's three pieces there. The, uh, the maple veneer on both sides and the thick poly coat. You know, I'm not criticizing, but don't let them fool you and say, oh, we, we picked this wood for the tone. But anyway, <laughs> just to finish this off, a last minute thing. My buddy wanted a, a bottle opener on the back of the guitar. That's kind of cool. Anyway, subscribe to this channel. I've got lots of stuff coming up. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Lots of stuff coming up on there as well. Check out my t-shirts, you know. That's, uh, they're kind of cool, I think. Stay safe, everybody, and we'll catch you next time.